Well, hey guys, and welcome to Solar Cabin Channel. You know, I was uh, going through YouTube and watching some off-grid videos from some other people, and uh, it always kind of uh, amuses me, or amazes me, I should say. Uh, some of these guys have really big systems. I mean really big systems. And they always seem to be running out of power. And I can't understand why that's happening. I don't know what they're running uh, around their houses or their homesteads, but it must be a lot different than the way I live. Now, I've been off-grid for over 20 years, uh, and I live very comfortably here in my off-grid cabin with just a 800-watt system with a 200-watt recharging station, about 1.4 kilowatts altogether. And I don't have a large battery bank, but I do have several batteries, and I also have several power stations. And I want to explain to people how I use my system uh, so that I can use the excess power, because my solar panels usually have my main batteries which is a 400 amp hour battery that usually has that battery charged up by 10 o'clock in the morning if it's a cloudy day maybe by 12 o'clock after that I've got excess power being produced my solar panels are going to keep producing even after that battery is completely full for my main system so I use that excess power and I recharge two more 200 amp hour batteries a very large 200 amp hour power station, a 100 amp hour power station, and several smaller power stations. Now you may wonder why I would do that. Well that's excess power, I can store those in power stations and extra batteries, and then on those low sun days, when we're not getting a lot of uh, sunlight to keep my, my main system powered up, I've got my power stations and my extra batteries, I can just hook into those using my inverter and run anything that I need to run. Now in my cabin here, I've got two 12 volt or 24 volt uh, refrigerated freezers that are running full time off of my system. I've got a laptop right here and because I run a business online it is always on 24 7 pretty much every day all the time uh, my laptop computer is on and I'm doing work on it. Uh, I'm running a uh, Pura, Pura Vortex uh, air purifier uh, during the winter time to clean the air in my cabin. Uh, I run a fan for my uh, propane heater. I run lights of course. I've got LED lights all through my cabin here and in my bathroom. Uh, I've got uh, a water pump, a 12 volt water pump that runs whenever I turn my water on if I'm uh, running water for the sink to wash dishes or running my shower. I've got a 12 volt water pump. And then I've also got uh, in the summertime, I've got an electric lawn mower that I keep recharged up. I've got an electric e-bike that I keep charged up. I run all kinds of different power tools outside off of my power stations. And in summer, I've got so much power, I just don't even really uh, use half of it probably. Uh, in the wintertime, I've got an electric snow blower that I run all the time. I also have an electric uh, micro washing machine that I use to wash my clothes occasionally. Uh, you know, so I, I just don't understand really how these guys with these great big systems are always running out of power and seem to have to always be expanding their systems. Now, I know it's harder if you have a family, especially if you've got kids, teenagers, they use a lot of power. Uh, they want to run gaming machines and stuff like that. Yeah, hair blowers or hair dryers or whatever, maybe that sort of stuff. Or maybe they're watching a big screen TV uh, all day long. I don't know what they're doing with their system, but they must be using stuff that really uses a lot of power and they're not uh, and they're not in any way trying to reduce that amount. So let me just show you here quickly uh, around my cabin and the, the way that I store my power. Maybe that will give some people some ideas and maybe take some of the mystery out of it. So let me show you around the, some of the ways that I store my excess power. Okay, so we'll start here with the big boy. This is an all powers power station. It has a 200 amp hour battery in it. Uh, as you can see, it's almost full, 92%. It'll be full here in another half hour. This is being charged up by a 400-watt uh, solar power system that I just installed this year. It charges this up generally in about two to four hours, depending on how much power I've used for it. Uh, this is used for uh, basically a backup for my main system. And it also is used to recharge my other power stations. Because this has a 2,500-watt uh, inverter in it. It can charge and run lots of different things like my uh, snow blower and my heavy outside tools and things like that. But primarily it is used as a backup and that's why it's down to 92% because I was charging up one of my other power stations from this earlier. So I'll show you those now. 
Okay, so this is my recharging station. This is a 200 amp hour LiPo 4 battery. This is another 200 amp hour LiPo 4 battery. And over here I've got a uh, Renogi 100 amp hour AGM battery. On top of that, I've got my uh, General Arc, which has a, about a uh, 50 amp hour LiPo 4 battery in it. Now, all of these are being charged up right now. These, This battery here I charge up from a 200 watt recharging station, which I'll show you when I go outside. When it's full, I switch it over and charge up this 200 amp hour battery. So I've always got one completely filled up and one that's being recharged. This is running two of my refrigerators right now. This runs two 12 volt refrigerators. And this system over here is only used for my Wi-Fi and internet and to recharge my phone. It's basically a gadget charger. It's all I use this 100 amp hour AGM battery for. This power station here is what I use for my backups. And this one I like because I can take it outside and use it with any of my power tools because it's got a handle on it. It's not too heavy, so I can take it outside, use it outside, or use it inside. And a lot of times I will just switch back and forth with whatever power station I have charged up at the time. Then I set the other one over here and charge it up from that main system. Okay, so this is another power station here. This is the Anchor Solix. This has about a 100 amp hour battery. Uh, this one recharges really fast. Now this one here, I do have a separate solar panel for it. It's a 200 watt solar panel that I can plug in. Most of the time though, I just recharge it from my other power station because it's already got a full battery and so I just plug this into a cord back here from that other power station and let that 400 watt uh, system recharge this battery up for me. This is used right here around my kitchen, as you can see. I use this for a lot of cooking gadgets. I use that to run my microwave right here and also my air fryer, any other small appliances like this. And if needed, I can easily plug my refrigerators, which are over here in my kitchen. I can plug them into this unit. So my system is set up so I can switch them back and forth to whatever batteries and power station are set up. Uh, that are completely full and run them that way and I can recharge them all from the different solar panels that I use. Okay so like I said I've got lots of power stations. This is an all light power station uh, and this over here is a Blue Eddy 55 power station. Again I charge these bu both up from my main system. Anytime I have excess power I'm charging these power stations up and then I just use these for various things like right now I've got my air uh, purifier plugged into this one and I've got a fan that goes on top of my heater right here and I'm just using that to run that fan Fan, so when I'm running my heater, I can get a little more air in the room. This one here isn't charged, isn't power, plugged into anything right now. It's just sitting. It's completely full, wet, ready. If this one goes uh, gets low enough, to like 50%, then I'll switch it over and I'll charge this one back up. I do have a couple of other even smaller power stations that I use for LED lights and things like that. All right, so let's go outside now and I'll uh, explain my solar power system to you. Okay, so these are my main. Uh, power systems here. These are two 400 watt systems, Renogi 100 watt panels. Uh, this one here charges up my main system, uh, which is a 400 amp hour battery. That's in my bathroom. I couldn't very well show it to you because it's kind of hid underneath the closet there. This one here charges up that uh, all powers uh, power station uh, that also has a 200 amp hour battery. And this is my re basically my recharging system for all of my different power stations uh, that are in the cabin. Between these two here, as soon as the sun gets up, uh, usually by 8 o'clock in the morning, they're starting to produce. Usually by 10 o'clock in the summer, everything's already charged up. Noon, if I've got good sunshine in wintertime, both these systems here will completely charge up my, my power system and I'll have excess for whatever I need to do. I also have a small 200 watt recharging station, which I'll show you here. Okay, and this is my 200 watt recharging station. This is going into that uh, AGM battery I said that I use for just running my Wi-Fi, internet, and uh, producing extra power if I ever need it, because it actually produces way more power than that battery can handle. I can also use this to charge up power stations or anything else like this. I put these on a trailer that I had, and I've d designed it so that I can adjust the angle and tilt to get this, move it around wherever I need to. So you can see on this trailer, I can actually raise and lower this. In summer, I lower it down like that so it's getting that direct sunlight. In winter, I'll raise it up so that it's getting more of the lower sunlight. So this is a 200 watt recharging station, uh, again two, two 100 watt panels. That is my system, that is two 400 watt systems and a 200 watt system that powers my entire cabin and I always have excess power so I don't understand how these people keep running out of power uh, with these great big systems they're installing. Alright folks, I hope this explains some things to you uh, of how a real off-gridder actually lives full-time and I've been doing it for over 20 years. Started with even a much smaller system than what I have now. I live for 10 years with just 400 watt system. Uh, and a lot of it has to do with uh, the type of uh, appliances that you choose, using the right appliances, and then using the sunlight 
when you're getting the most power from the sunshine uh, and you have excess to run big equipment, large appliances, and not trying to run them all at night. All right, folks, have a great day.